In this video, we're going to be talking about how to solve for when and where two cars meet. We have two cars that are 200 meters apart. A green car is going at four meters per second while the red car is traveling at three meters per second in the other direction towards that green car. How long does it take for the cars to meet and where do they meet? So since we're talking about two vehicles that are traveling at constant velocity, all we really need is V equals delta x over t. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange that formula just a little bit to fit our needs of what we need to solve for for this type of problem. So our delta x we're going to break into a final position minus initial position and then set everything equal to the final position. All right, so all I really did there is take our formula and rearrange it to set that equal to the final position. And like I said, you'll see why shortly after we've set up some of the numbers and some of the calculations. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is label my diagram and set up all my known variables for both of the vehicles. All right, so I went ahead and labeled my diagram and labeled all my known variables. And usually this is the part where people get stuck if they haven't had much experience working with a problem like this. Because if you take a look at all the information that we have labeled for our green car, we have two unknown variables. And then same applies for the red car. We have two unknown variables. So when I'm labeling all my known variables for the green car, it's moving forward at four meters per second. It starts at the zero meter mark. And then the other two are unknown. For the red car, we want to make sure that we make that negative three meters per second to indicate that it's traveling the opposite direction towards the green car. The starting position for my red car is 200 because it's starting 200 meters away from zero. And again, we have two unknown variables there. Now, the most significant part of this problem is understanding that both of our final positions are equal to each other because the question is asking where do they meet so they're ending up in the same exact spot. Now I've set up two formulas that are equal to our final position so because they're equal to each other that means this quantity is equal to this quantity so we can fairly easily solve for time once we set those two equal to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and set those two equal to each other, solve for time, and then solve for our final position.
All right, in the center here, I finished solving for the total time. That's the time that applies to our red car and the time that applies to our green car because they travel for the same amount of time until they meet. And then after I've solved these formulas over here to, for the time of the 28.57 seconds, from there, you can plug it into either of the formulas to solve for the final position. I could have plugged it in right here and then multiplied it by negative three and added 200, or I could have plugged it in right here, which is just multiplying by four and adding zero, basically adding nothing. Um, so I just chose this formula right here because it was just a little bit less math. Uh, sometimes what you can do is you can plug it into both formulas to see if you get the same answer. Um, earlier, I did plug it into both formulas and I did get the same answer. So I just typically choose the one that has a little bit less math involved, but both of them, you should get the same final position. All right. So that concludes how to find how long it takes for two cars to meet and where they meet. Now, there are a couple of variations to that. So if you'd like to listen to how to solve different variations of it, go ahead and stay tuned. Now, for the other variations, it may be something along the lines of um, one car chasing down another car. Really, all of your steps are very, very similar. The only difference is that one of the velocities wouldn't be negative. So it might be something along the lines of, this red car is moving forward at three meters per second, and then the green car is chasing it down going four meters per second. All of your calculations would be the same, except there would be no negative involved in your calculation, and obviously all of your numbers would change from there. Um, another one of the variations is if one of the cars are accelerating. Now in that case, what you would do is you would typically have this formula, delta x equals the initial velocity times t, plus one half AT squared. This setup is gonna be definitely a lot more complicated mathematically than the example I just showed you. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna break up your delta X into the final position minus the initial position. And you're still gonna do something similar to where you set up a formula for both of your objects, a lot of times it's cars, but obviously it could be any sort of moving object. And you set them both equal to the final position. So if you're talking about the type of problem where you're looking for when and where two objects meet, you usually wanna set everything equal to XF and then set those two formulas equal to each other as we did in the center here. Now, when you do that with an accelerated formula, it becomes much more complicated because then you have the final position equal to VIT plus one half AT squared plus XI or X naught, your initial position. Then if you set this whole quantity equal to something like this, you're gonna end up having to use a quadratic to solve for your T in that case, obviously you can use a quadratic formula, you can use a solve function in your calculator if you have a fairly advanced calculator, or you could graph the two and find an intersecting point for your answer there. Okay, so that pretty much covers most of the variations. Obviously there's an infinite amount of variations that can be involved. What you really wanna do is make sure you start off with a nice diagram and then label where your starting position is for each one of the objects and then label all the variables you know for each of them separately. So make sure you keep your known variables separate for every object that you're working with. And then a lot of the times what you're typically solving for is a time first, and then you can solve for a lot of variables from there. Um, so you wanna make sure you rearrange your formulas so they are equal to some kind of final position so that you can take two formulas and set them equal to one another. And then, you would typically solve for a time from there and then you could plug the time back in to the equation of your choice to find more variables such as the final position. So that is how you solve for when and where two cars meet. Thank you for watching and listening.